started off uh, with a new chapter uh, that was criminal procedure code CRPC. sorry yeah CRPC. okay so we discussed on basic definitions like what is uh, mens rea, what is a bailable offense, what is a non-bailable offense, and what is cognizable right? and non-cognizable offense. Yeah. So now we'll we'll do a quick revision on uh, the powers of the court, okay, and then we will start off, right? Okay. So uh, if you remember, we discussed about uh, various uh, powers of the, first of all classes of criminal courts. Yes. Uh, first, we have the executive magistrate, then we have the judicial magistrate of the second class, yes. then judicial magistrate of the first class, sessions court and the high court. Okay. So, generally offenses are given in Indian penal court or any other law. Okay. If any, uh, I mean, if any specific law is there, otherwise we refer to the first schedule. Okay. Now, uh, what is the sentence that High Court can pass? High Court can pass any sentence that is the death sentence, sentence, imprisonment for a lifetime, whatever it is. Okay. No. Now, sessions judge or additional judge, or additional sessions judge, they can pass any order, but not death, not life imprisonment for more than 10 years or life, I mean, death, life imprisonment or imprisonment more than 10 years. Okay. So basically a sessions judge or an additional sessions judge can pass an order for imprisonment up to 10 years. Okay. Uh, as assistant sessions judge can pass again, can pass an order for imprisonment up to 10 years. Okay. okay. Now, when it comes to two, uh, chief judicial magistrate, he can pass uh, order for imprisonment for a term up to seven years. Okay. And magistrate of first class can pass an order for imprisonment for a term up to three years and fine, which is not exceeding 10,000 rupees. And for magistrate of second class, the imprisonment term can be up to one year and the fine not exceeding 5,000 rupees. Are we clear on this one? Yes, sir. Next, we also discussed if there is any default in paying the fine, then they can be imprisoned. Okay. And if there are, if a person is convicted for several offenses in one trial, then the quantum of punishment can be combined by the court. Okay. Uh, is it clear till this point? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Right. Uh, so we'll move on to the next topic, which so is the arrest of. The question is the ultimate power is with the High Court, but when it comes to one step lower, the uh, the punishment is restricted to every uh, other magistrates and judges. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, moving on to the next topic, that is arrest of person. Okay. So now we'll understand what is the procedure for arresting a person okay to, to know that we need to understand what is arrest first of all right arrest means taking into custody of another person under the authority that is empowered by law okay this is for the purpose of holding or detaining him to answer the criminal charges or preventing the commission of a criminal offense. Now, arrest doesn't happen only after the offense is over. Okay. It might happen as a preventive measure also, right? They detain people, you know, for anticipating that they might do something wrong and they are uh, to prevent the commission of a criminal offense, they are arrested. So, arrest can be for holding a person who has done a criminal offense or to detain a person to prevent the criminal offense. Okay. Now, what is the procedure of this arrest? Now, any police officer, okay, without the order of magistrate or without a warrant can arrest people if it is under the following, if it is any of the following. Okay. So, we had studied that generally police officer, if he has to arrest someone, there should be an order of magistrate or there should be an arrest warrant, right? This is an exceptional case. Now, a police officer may, without a, the order of magistrate and without a warrant, arrest a person, okay, who commits in the presence of police officer a cognizable offense. That is, in front of the police officer itself, that offense has happened. Like, say a police officer is going on his bike, there he sees some offense happening. Okay, that time he need not wait for magistrate order. He need not wait for a warrant. He can directly he can arrest, arrest that person. Arrest, arrest that person. Sorry? Means uh, 
in cognizable offense means when a police officer will see no one that on the roads and that some um, offense is happening so in that case he can arrest the arrest the accused people without the arrest warrant yeah exactly so in case there is an offense that happens in the presence of police officer then he need not wait for the magistrate's order or the warrant okay next against whom a reasonable complaint has been made okay or credible information has been received or reasonable suspicion exist for this cognizable offense punishable with imprisonment for a term which may be less than 7 years okay so one is in his presence if the offense happens the second condition is if he has received a complaint or any credible information or he is suspicious about someone for doing any offense right where the imprisonment is not more than 7 years which means for any offense where imprisonment is more than 7 years police officer cannot arrest without a warrant or cannot arrest without the uh, magistrate's order this is an again an exception he need not take magistrate order or a warrant if that offense is uh an offense where penalty is not more than 7 years okay so if he has received a complaint or some information or there is suspicion about that person okay next police officer is satisfied that that arrest is necessary so that that person doesn't do further offense okay and he feels that he can do proper investigation if such person is arrested okay suppose he feels that this person might tamper or disappear the evidences if he is left free he can arrest him in such situation or to prevent that person to threaten somebody else okay to induce somebody else or to promise someone else that i'll give you money you go surrender okay to prevent him from doing that okay as unless such person is arrested his presence in the court whenever required cannot be ensured or if he feels that if this person is not arrested he cannot be presented at the court if any of these reasons are satisfied and the offense for which the punishment is not more than 7 years then police officer can arrest without a warrant without a magistrate's order did you understand yes. so the first condition is he can arrest if the offense has taken place in his presence the second criteria is if he has received any complaint or some credible information okay or he has suspicion for any offense for which the penalty is not more than 7 years okay then if any of the seven conditions are satisfied what are those seven conditions so remember seven years seven conditions okay so one is he believes that there is a credible complaint against him second he feels that there he has to be arrested to prevent you know uh, further commission of the offense or when he feels that there can be proper investigation only if he is arrested okay or he can prevent that person from destroying the evidence right or ensure that he doesn't threaten another person or promise okay or he feels that this person has to be arrested to be presented at the court if any of these conditions are satisfied then the police officer can arrest without a warrant without an order of magistrate are you guys clear till this point yes ma'am yes ma'am okay next now police officer can further arrest without a warrant without a magistrate order uh, a person against whom there has been a reasonable complaint or a credible information for cognizable offense okay for a term which may be more than 7 years death or life imprisonment okay now this is just opposite to what we studied now okay instead of making this as two point they could have rather given he can arrest any person but that is not how law is right so in case he has received a reasonable complaint or there is a suspicion for any offense where the term of imprisonment is more than 7 years or death or life imprisonment he can still arrest without a warrant without a magistrate's order 
ओके और अ पर्सन हु हैज बीन प्रोक्लेम्ड एज एन ऑफेंडर अंडर द क्रिमिनल प्रोसीजर कोड बाय द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट ओके समटाइम्स सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट वुड हैव हैबिचुअल ऑफेंडर्स दे वुड हैव टैग्ड पीपल एज हैबिचुअल ऑफेंडर्स ओके सच पीपल कैन बी अरेस्टेड इवन विदाउट अ वारंट एंड इवन विदाउट द मैजिस्ट्रेट्स ऑर्डर ओके नेक्स्ट इज इफ ही फाइल्स फॉर स्टेट गवर्नमेंट राइट मैम यस okay now uh, the next condition is if he finds that there is some reason i mean they they possess something which is a stolen property right if the police officer has a doubt that some person is in possession of a so stolen property in in such cases they can arrest without a warrant and without a magistrate order okay next he can arrest a person right who obstructs a police officer while in execution of his duty or who has attempted to escape while he is in the uh, by, who has attempted to escape from the lawful custody that is anyone who doesn't uh, you know uh, what do you say uh, cooperate with the police officer he obstructs police officer to execute his duty or he tries to escape from custody police officer can Uh, arrest him okay now who is reasonably suspected of being deserter from any armed forces of the union now anyone who has uh, you know randomly left or who, who has deserted the armed forces he is bound to be a terrorist right now why why do we have people in the armed forces they are serving nation correct if he deserts himself leaves the army and runs away somewhere then he is liable to be arrested Okay. Next, any act committed at any place out of India, which I mean, which being uh, I'm sorry, I think there is some misprint here. Second, let me just come. Yeah. So basically, any person who has uh, committed any offence out of India, okay, and he's come to India, and you know that there is some uh, offence committed by him, then there can be a uh arrest without a warrant okay a uh, person who has already been arrested who has who has been released and still commits a breach okay usually what happens once they are released also every day they have to go sign and you know they have to go sign surety and all of it okay in case he commits a breach he is liable to be arrested okay uh, for whose arrest there has been a requisition made received from any other police officer you would have seen in movies someone from another jurisdiction will ask person in their jurisdiction to arrest a particular person right all of these are cases where police officer can arrest without warrant without an order of magistrate is this clear yes ma'am ma'am confusing yes ma'am for less than 7 years and for more than 7 years for both you need warrant that's what it no no the whole point is uh, the police officer can arrest without a warrant and without a magistrate order under that these are different points okay now for 7 years and more than 7 years he has the power okay but they are given under two different headings for you am i clear yes okay. anyone who is confused i assume no one's confused it's pretty simple okay well, you know the best way of learning this chapter is please imagine okay uh, it's easier to imagine one police officer arresting and all it's easier to remember that way of course you can't remember in civil procedure code and all of it but this is one such chapter you can make your own imagination so make your make up your own story for this it is easier to remember okay now what are the measures to be followed by the police officer okay now first police officer can send a notice for uh, appearance where arrest may not be required that is you know not that in every case police officer will go with this hatkade uh, and say you are under arrest that that only happens in movies generally police officer will first send a notice for appearance if you know the offence is not so much where arrest is required okay now the person who receives a notice 
should appear before the police officer it is his duty now after receiving the notice also if if a person doesn't report or doesn't appear uh, in front of the police officer he can be arrested okay so these are the measures to be followed by the police officer before any arrest right now what is the procedure for arrest under section 41 b okay so police officer while making an arrest shall bear an accurate visible and clear identification of his name which will facilitate easy identification so basically he has to be in his uniform with his name which is visible and clear okay he has to prepare a memorandum of arrest okay which will be attested by one witness who is the member of family of the person who is getting arrested or a respectable member of the locality where the arrest is made so what he will do while arresting he will not just randomly pull a person and go okay he will prepare something called as a memorandum of arrest that he is arresting this person okay that memorandum will be signed by one witness now that witness can be any person in the family who is being arrested okay or any respectable member in the society or in that locality where the arrest is being made okay it will be counter signed by the person who is arrested so if i mean i shouldn't be giving examples like this but if you are getting arrested you will also sign on the memorandum of arrest someone in your family also will sign on the memorandum of arrest okay also uh, the police officer will inform the person arrested unless the memorandum is attested by a member of the family that he has the right to have a relative or friend named by him to be informed of his arrest now say the police officer comes to arrest a person in that person's house there is nobody no family member no locality and all then the person who is getting arrested has the right to you know name any of his relative or friend to whom we have to inform about the arrest to whom the police officer should inform about the arrest is this clear this is section 41b so what happens police officer will go with a memorandum of arrest first thing he should have his identification clear in that memorandum any family member or any uh, respectable person in the locality will sign as witness the accused also will sign the person who is getting arrested also will sign okay the memorandum and if there is nobody to be informed about the arrest then this person who is getting arrested has the right to call or to inform the police that any friend or relative of his has to be informed about the arrest clear obviously if a person is getting arrested he can't put up whatsapp status like as getting uh, arrested will not be available on calls or messages he can't do all of those things right so that's why he has to inform some person that he is getting arrested so yeah uh, memorandum of arrest and warrant is both are the same ha huh. two different things okay memorandum of arrest is done during an arrest even if there is a warrant memorandum of arrest is prepared okay basically the reason why we are having a memorandum of arrest is a documentary evidence that this person was arrested in front of a witness okay okay warrant is more of an order kind of thing memorandum is there in any case of arrest okay right next section 41d okay so when any person is arrested and he is being interrogated by the police and all of it okay he has the right to meet an advocate of his choice during the interrogation okay though not throughout the interrogation during the interrogation he has the right to have an advocate with him correct otherwise how he will come out he needs someone to help him right if he is not a convict so that's why uh, law allows him to have an advocate during uh, his interrogation am i clear yes ma'am yes, ma is this interesting or boring it's interesting yeah, yeah. Interesting. Oh, right. in movies sorry means in uh, movies we have found this saw this in the movies and the series yeah that's why that's why this chapter people like because it is uh, more like 
there is a lot of drama in this chapter so it's easy okay. remember okay. Right. in the form of a story yeah that, that's that's the easiest way to remember this chapter yeah. okay right uh moving on uh to discuss on section 42 okay this talks about arrest on refusal to give name and residence now if a person who is accused of committing some non cognizable offence okay and he does not give his name residence or gives the name and residence which is not existing he gives his false name of uh, or false address he may be taken into custody okay but he cannot be kept in the custody for more than 24 hours okay so within 24 hours he shall be forwarded to the magistrate if information is not provided okay so if a person is giving fake address fake name or random you know all all fake things that people can do then he is also liable to be arrested so here you won't call it arrest he you will because you will call in uh, i mean you will call it keeping them under custody for a reason that this is a non cognizable offence okay and uh, the police officer cannot keep any person under custody for more than 24 hours okay uh, as soon as he is brought under custody within 24 hours he should be forwarded to the magistrate am i clear so that was section 42 clear section 43 is a private person may arrest or cause to be arrested any person who in his presence commits a non bailable and cognizable offence or who is a proclaimed offender that means if we come across some person who is who commits a crime in front of us okay which is non bailable and cognizable we also have the right to arrest such people but sadly we don't know about our rights okay so a private person also can arrest an other person or i can cause to be arrested that is i can go to the police and tell ki you have to arrest this person because he has committed this offence in my presence yes clear okay next moving on to section 44 okay here arrest by we talk about arrest by magistrate okay now magistrate also has been given the power to arrest the person who has committed an offence in his presence and also commit him to custody okay so he has the power to arrest a person who has committed an offence in his presence okay and he has the power to arrest a person for which he is competent and has also been authorized to issue a warrant right obviously magistrate has the power to issue a warrant understand this is section 44 right now exception for armed forces obviously now say people in the armed forces kill another person okay that's not called a murder because they are doing their official duty they have killed a terrorist right so if while they are discharging their duty official duty okay they are exempted or they are accepted for arrest right any armed forces they cannot be arrested while they are discharging their official duty clear that is section 45 understood till here yes ma'am yes ma'am okay yes ma'am okay. yes, ma moving on to section 46 okay now this talks about the procedure for arrest okay the i mean the officer who is arresting a person has the authority to touch and confine the body of the person that is he has the authority to drag this person and tell that you are under arrest okay something that happens in movies he has the power to touch that person but he does not have the right to cause death to that person okay he can touch and confine the body but not cause death to that person right there are special safeguards that have been made for women okay now when a woman is being arrested right she cannot be arrested after sunset and before sunrise other than exceptional circumstances right if a woman is being arrested it has to be during the daytime not after sunset and before sunrise basically in the night a woman cannot be arrested clear now section 48 authorizes a police officer 
to pursue the offender whom he is authorized to arrest without a warrant into any place in india for the purpose of effecting his address uh, arrest okay so basically police officer has the right to take the offender to any place in india to ensure that he is arrested say on highway he may he finds that person he can still take him to the nearest police station or to any place to ensure that that person is arrested okay but the persons who are arrested okay are to be taken before the magistrate or officer in charge of the police station without unnecessary delay okay that is once a person is arrested he should not there should not be delay in taking him to the magistrate clear now constitution of india also says this is not in criminal procedure code it is in constitution of india which says that in all possible circumstances when a person is arrested he should be presented before the magistrate within 24 hours okay now suppose this 24 hours cannot happen right uh, say there for some reason uh, there he cannot be taken to the magistrate within 24 hours but he should be uh, i mean he should not be detained for more than 15 to 60 days that is by then at least he should be presented before the magistrate okay a person arrested by the police officer shall be discharged only on his own bond or bail or under special order of magistrate once a person is arrested for him to come out either there should be a, a bond or there should be a bail or there should be an order of magistrate clear with the concepts of arrest yes ma'am yes ma'am any doubts no okay can we move on yes ma'am okay right uh, now if you remember in uh, civil procedure code we studied something as summons what was that summons in civil procedure code i'm not asking what we we will study now in civil procedure code we studied something called as summon summons means it is given by the court to the ordering the person to, uh, the before the court actually okay uh, to whom is this served the plaintiff or the defendant the uh, defendant uh, defendant plaintiff ma'am to the plaintiff it has been given summons has been uh, given to the court to the wait think again who the summons is being served to whom put it on the chat window summons is served to whom a quick answers yeah mm. one word answer okay to defend it why by the court perfect okay who will pay for the summons plaintiff okay okay this much if you know more than in right here summons is slightly different under criminal procedure code okay now summon will be issued to an accused person or witness either for appearance or for producing a document or a thing okay here it is not necessarily the accused person only it can also be for a witness okay so summon will be served by the court for any person to appear or to be a witness for or to produce a particular document okay now summon will also be in writing it will be in duplicate that is two copies one is uh, signed by the presiding officer of the court or any officer authorized by the high court okay and it will also uh, bear uh, the seal of the court okay summon will usually be clear and specific in terms of the title of the court place at which at the day time and day when the attendance of the person summoned is required okay it it will it shall be served by a police officer or an officer of the court 
or any other public servant as well okay in case the person summoned cannot be found by the exercise of due diligence the summon may be served by leaving one of the duplicates for him with some adult male member of his family residing with him and the person with whom the summons is so left shall if required by the uh, serving officer sign a receipt on the back of the duplicate so basically the summon is served to a person if he has to appear before the court or he has to be a witness okay or he has to produce a, a document or any other thing now if this person is not available it will be served to the person who is available in his uh, residence okay and they will also take an acknowledgement from this person that he has uh, collected the summons okay now when it comes to summons to corporate bodies it will be served to the secretary okay that is company secretary local manager or principal officer of the corporation by a letter sent through registered post am i clear yes ma'am yes ma'am okay uh, one second i'll just turn off it here yeah next we talk about the warrant of arrest okay now every warrant of arrest is issued by a court under criminal procedure code and it will be in writing signed by the presiding officer of the court and will bear the seal of the court I mean, okay now what is this form ma'am actually sorry presiding officer means who actually of court actually i didn't get your question uh, oh ma'am means uh, my question was means this uh, presiding officer means who i, I ask now see there will be a presiding officer of the court okay so uh, i mean uh, when when we talk about the hierarchy in the court there is a court officer there is one person who is called as the presiding officer of the court there are judges okay and there are advocates right mm -hmm. so if you are go i mean if you happen to go to karnataka high court or if you get a chance to visit any court you see there are court officers okay who are designated for their purpose people who take uh, you know uh, take up the cases who do the admin work related to any case see we only see that there is one judge there are two people standing here and there are advocates fighting for it but the administrative officers are the one who list the cases right who call for hearing who send notices and all of it okay. right so uh, one among the officer of the court is the presiding the highest authority who has the who is called as the presiding officer of the court okay mm -hmm. so uh, every warrant for arrest is issued by the court ideally it will be in writing okay yeah. and it will bear the name and designation of the person who is executing it right yeah. it should also mention the full name and description of the person who is being arrested okay it must state what is the uh, offence for which he is being charged for okay it must be signed by the presiding officer and it must be sealed okay now the police officer or any other person executing the warrant of arrest okay shall bring the person arrested before the court without any delay and such delay shall not exceed more than 24 hours okay? now suppose that 24 hours includes journey of bringing one person to from one place to another place then that journey time is excluded usually they have to be presented before the magistrate within 24 hours am i clear any doubt no ma'am no uh next topic that we will study so are you guys clear with arrest warrant of arrest the procedure for arrest now yes ma'am yes? Yes. yes if you revise once you will be able to remember yes ma'am yeah okay 
Uh, moving on to the next topic. Okay, now we are moving apart uh, after the arrest. Okay, now suppose a warrant has been issued and it remains unexecuted. That is, for reasons that person is absconding or anything like that, then under the criminal procedure code, we have two remedies. Okay, one is issuing a proclamation or attachment and sale of property. If it is believed that the person who uh, against whom there is a warrant he is absconded or he is concealing or hiding himself okay and the warrant cannot be executed the court may publish a written proclamation okay that he has to appear within 30 days or they can tell that this person is missing and he has to be uh, i mean basically proclamation is where you have to get that person back okay so all that missing signs and all that you see is a proclamation that this person is required to appear before the court what they can also do is they can attach or sell the property if they know that that this is the property of that person they can attach that property or they can sell it off so that this person comes back while he gets to know his property is being sold off clear so these are Two remedies that is proclamation is uh, section 82 and attachment is section 83. Clear? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, next comes summons to produce. Okay, uh, so it becomes necessary that a person should produce a document or anything like when it comes to criminal procedure code, anything and everything can be a evidence right so if they have to produce a document or anything which may be in possession or <coughs> excuse me or power for the purposes of investigation okay or for inquiry it can be called for so you can issue a summon to produce that document or you can issue a summon to produce a particular thing which is required for investigation or inquiry okay next comes search warrant just like summons okay uh, for producing a document or a thing there can be search warrant also okay this can be issued by the court if the court feels that the person summoned has to produce a document uh, and he is not producing it then they can order for a search warrant okay so they can go search his premises Okay, where a document or a thing is not known to the court to be in the possession of any person. So you don't know where that document is, you can uh, pass a search warrant. Okay, or for general inspection where they can do investigation for a particular case. Clear? So they can do a search warrant uh, or they can issue a search warrant. Now, if any document, okay. Uh, is under the uh, custody of any postal or telegraph authority, any parcel, okay, you cannot search such documents, okay, so the warrant cannot be issued for such documents or such things unless it is approved by a district magistrate or chief judicial magistrate, okay, so a search warrant can be issued at any place, any premise, but if it is in the custody of postal or telegraph authority, then it has to, uh, the search warrant has to be approved either by a district magistrate or chief judicial magistrate. Am I clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, with this, we'll take a quick uh, 5 to 10 minutes break and then we will start. It's 5.15 now. Um, maybe 525 we should be able to continue okay so we'll wind up this chapter today itself so take a quick break in the break if possible refresh your minds uh, don't get too confused okay once we finish this you revise once okay or if you feel that your mind is fresh enough then only revise don't get confused okay all right so we'll catch up again at 525 sure Uh, so we discussed uh, what is search uh, warrant, what is summons. Uh, now we move on to a different chapter under the criminal procedure. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, 
ma'am the second point is there right uh, uh, for issuing search warrant that's where a document or a thing is not known to the court or to be in possession of the person so that is if the court is not sure if the person has it correct so they can order for a search warrant see if you know that you have a particular document like say uh if if the court knows that a company has its balance sheet then they can issue a summons to produce you have to give your balance sheet you have to give your financial data okay now suppose they are concealing some information and you don't know where such information is then you can conduct a search warrant to find out the where the documents are or who has the possession of the documents understand the difference summons yes, to produce is when you know who has the documents you ask them to produce search warrant is when the court doesn't really know who has the document but according to the court someone should be having so they conduct search warrant so uh, if you have noticed in movies and all they show these income tax authorities and all come with a search warrant right uh, when they are doing a raid that is when you have to identify some concealed items that is called as a search warrant clear yes ma'am okay moving on to the next chapter under uh, criminal procedure code that is for keeping the peace and for good behavior okay to ensure that there is public peace right so security for keeping the peace on conviction okay now the court of sessions or a court of magistrate of first class if it convicts any person for any offense mentioned below he can order for a bond with or without securities for keeping peace for not exceeding 3 years that is if a person who is say an offender who has been convicted for any offense under uh, that is punishable under indian penal code or any offense which includes you know criminal force assault of criminal force okay or any offense which is caused or intended to cause breach for public peace okay so if the court feels that in case this person might cause more problem a convict might cause more problem they can take a bond from him for 3 years up to 3 years that he will keep public peace okay he will not do anything that will be breach the public peace clear yes, the conviction is important sorry the meaning of, of the conviction means what actually Mm. so a convict a person is a convict if he is accused for some uh, offense right okay. he is called a convict under the criminal procedure code now to ensure that he maintains public peace okay like say convict means not only being arrested right convict can also be a person who has to pay some penalty or he has to be under certain custody right so for him to ensure that he will maintain public peace okay they can take a bond that is a magistrate can take a bond that he will not do anything that will ruin the public peace and tranquility okay okay a executive magistrate may require person causing disturbance to public tranquility to show cause for not executing the bond now suppose he has not executed that bond and he is causing disturbance to the public just because he is arrested see think in all practical purpose okay some rowdy is arrested right or some rowdy is convicted for some offense every day he has to go to police station sign and everything okay and with that you know uh, agitation that he is being caught if he tries to you know ruin public peace that is threaten people or threaten people who filed a complaint against him and all of those things it becomes so difficult right so that's why they take a bond that he will not do anything in public that will ruin the public peace clear and if he is not executed that bond they can send a show cause notice for not executing the bond as well clear understood the concept yes okay the next one is maintenance of public order and tranquility so now what we are discussing is generally how we maintain public order and tranquility okay so we are not allowed to have unlawful assemblies right so a magistrate or officer in charge of police station or officer not below the rank of sub inspector can order for unlawful assembly for more than 5 people to disperse you know that's why they when there is some disturbance they order for curfew not more than 5 people can assemble together right if you are assembling for some unlawful purpose 
right with all guns and long much and all of those things police officer has the right to tell you to disperse not more than five people can have unlawful assembly means in the yeah. situation of the curfew the special power will be given to the police forces to fire actually yeah yeah definitely that is because uh, the article which says that you cannot assemble for any unlawful purpose and you still meet they have the right to directly fire such people also okay, okay? if there is no curfew also in general scenario you meet 10 people nobody will bother but if more than 5 people meet for some unlawful purpose right some gang war and all of those things that happen i don't know if it happens in real or what it is but i have definitely seen in movies so if five people you know assemble five or more people assemble for unlawful purpose the police officer has the right to disperse such group okay and by force they can arrest and confine such people also right and executive magistrate of the highest rank okay may ensure that it should be dispersed by armed forces also right now if it is if situation is not under control they can call the army the armed forces to ensure that such assemblies are dispersed okay and to arrest such people or confine such people excuse me clear Yes. no prosecution shall be instituted against such person in any criminal court except with the sanction of central government if a person is officer or member of armed forces uh, or with the sanction of state government in any other case now if they are discharging their duty as armed forces it is okay otherwise if there are some unlawful assemblies they are they are bound or liable to be arrested i don't know if you all remember uh this movie rang de basanti okay so in the last <clears throat> they do a candlelight march and all but yeah of course this is against the government so they will tell that it is an unlawful assembly and then they'll start hitting people and all right so those things are called as unlawful assembly am i clear moving on to next uh, is public nuisance now what do you mean by nuisance public nuisance you would have heard this regularly they, they are causing a lot of public nuisance and all what does it mean uh, tell in your own words like what do you know about public nuisance unnecessary uh, creating of disturbances in the public places okay now say there is a flyover okay now i creating uh, uh, chaos in public places okay now i restrict movement of people in uh, on the flyover okay i i randomly put some stalls and all and ensure people cannot use the flyover or that bridge is that a public nuisance yes yeah so basically section 133 talks about various instances of public nuisance okay one is unlawfully obstructing or creating nuisance by removing some public place or blocking some place way river or some channel which is lawfully used by public okay now uh, if you would have seen on some busy street if someone is having some event or some function they put all pendal and all people will scold that it's public nuisance right some procession unlawful procession which is causing problem to the public is is also called as public nuisance okay also doing something or uh, you know uh, what do you say doing some business trade or some occupation of any merchandise or goods okay which is injurious to the health of the community that is also public nuisance constructing something or uh, in any public place and blocking the uh, movement of the people or you know causing problems to the people is also public nuisance okay building or tent or structure near a public place or some dangerous animal which is sent to destroy people and all all of this come under public nuisance okay so under section uh, 133 Uh, for initiating prevention under this uh, section 133 the magistrate should keep in mind that he is acting purely in the public interest okay so public must have the right uh, to way for which he is being obstructed so in case of any public nuisance the magistrate can pass order not to create nuisance to the public 
ओके सो इन केस ऑफ सर्टन अर्जेंट मैटर डिस्ट्रिक्ट मैजिस्ट्रेट और सब डिविजनल मैजिस्ट्रेट और एनी अदर मैजिस्ट्रेट स्पेशली एम्पावर्ड बाय दिस सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट सॉरी द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट कैन पास ऑर्डर फॉर स्टॉपिंग द पब्लिक न्यूसेंस इमीडिएटली ओके इन केस ऑफ एनी इमरजेंसी एंड ऑल दे कैन इमीडिएटली आस्क देम टू stop the public nuisance they can pass an order which can be in force for 2 months and can be extended for up to 6 months as well clear understood the concept of public nuisance okay moving on next is preventive action of the police okay now section 149 authorizes the police officer to prevent the commission of any cognizable offense okay so what they have the what power they have is they can detain a person when they feel or when they are suspicious about a person even before happening of any crime okay now this is the most debated topic right why it is debated is when we discuss this chapter on constitution of india we will understand that we have a right to live life and liberty okay we cannot be detained for any purpose but here the act allows a person to be uh, detained or a police officer can take a preventive action now there is a possibility that these police officer are uh, you know are taking advantage of this right correct it's a possibility just because they have the right maybe they have some revenge against some person they can detain that such person just like that so to protect you know uh, Uh, undue advantage of this uh, section we have the constitution of india in constitution of india unless there is a clear suspicion or unless there is a reliable source that this person might commit a cognizable offence they cannot be detained but if the police officer believes that there is a person who might commit a, any cognizable offence then he has the power to detain such people even if he doesn't have the order of magistrate or even if there is no warrant okay if the arrest can be i mean if the offense can be prevented now uh, people like uh, i don't know how many of you all have watched i i watch such series or not so if you have seen this family man i don't know how many of you all have watched this series so here you have seen that some persons are detained just because they are suspicious okay just because they are, you know the intelligence has some doubt on them and they have some information that something wrong might happen uh, in some time they will detain such people okay so uh, even such detention can be in police officers custody for 24 hours for more than 24 hours they have to be reported to the magistrate guys just give me one second. okay uh, sorry that was a very important call right so uh, yeah whenever a person is uh, taken into custody for such reasons also uh, he should be presented before the magistrate within 24 hours okay next we talk about inspection of weights and measures this is entirely a different topic okay uh, generally if there is uh, you know uh, if the police officer believes that some uh, trader or some uh, shopkeeper or retailer or wholesaler is uh, you know uh, cheating people with uh, different weights and measures okay so uh, such police officer without a warrant can enter such premises for inspecting such places okay so if you have seen uh, even now when there was a ban on plastic 
and all of it uh, police officers had the power to enter such places and pull out all the um, uh, plastic usage and all of it right so that similar to that when they feel that the people are cheating with all these weights and measures they have the power to enter such premises without a warrant clear yes ma'am next talking about information to police and their powers to investigate okay now information in case of cognizable cases or cognizable offenses every information relating to the commission of cognizable offense okay if given orally to an officer in charge of the police station shall be reduced to writing by him or under his direction read over by the informant okay so whenever you are giving any information to the police officer even if it is in oral it has to be reduced into writing okay and a person who is giving information shall uh, his details shall be entered in the book kept by the police officer okay and the information given to the police officer which is given in writing is called as an fir first information report this is something that you all would have heard okay also although this first information yeah. report karke it is not defined under the criminal procedure code but any 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 information given to the police officer in writing is usually called as an fir okay now any person who is aggrieved by the refusal on the part of police officer now you go to the police station you tell that i want to file an fir and he says that he will not take an fir then you may inform the, you may send this in writing to the superintendent of the police that this person has refused to uh, record my fir that's why i am sending it to the superintendent of the police clear now when it comes to information of non cognizable cases till now what we discussed were cognizable offense right uh, when it comes to information of non cognizable cases when any information is given to the police officer okay uh, within the limits of the police station where the non cognizable offense has taken place the police officer will enter the cause okay the eye of the substance of the information in a book kept by the police officer this is with respect to non cognizable offense okay generally what a police officer will do if you are giving any information related to non cognizable offense then it will be recorded in his book by himself okay and the police officer generally is not authorized to investigate any non cognizable case without the order of magistrate okay magistrate has to pass an order that the police officer should investigate otherwise he doesn't have the power to investigate but when it comes to cognizable offense the police officer can conduct investigation even if there is no order of the magistrate now what uh, will make your learning easy is if you can just go through the list of cognizable and non cognizable offenses okay one second i'll just see criminal procedure otherwise you won't know the difference between cognizable and non cognizable offenses okay so let's just quickly go to the first schedule one second so if you have an idea about for which offense he can conduct investigation if for which offense he cannot conduct investigation at least in exam one or two you write no people will know that you have put in some effort to understand the logic okay so i'll just uh, share my screen <laughs> yeah so uh, see this is the first schedule okay let's look at what is easy right now abatement of any offense if the act abated is committed in consequence and where no express provision is made for the punishment generally uh, if there is no specific punishment okay uh, then uh, the second let's yeah uh, then such offenses are uh, cognizable according to what it is cognizable or not oh, one second okay 
okay concealing to uh, concealing a design or committing an offense uh, that is punishable with death or imprisonment for life okay so here it is a non bailable offense and it is a non cognizable offense now something abetment of act uh, in subordination uh, by a soldier or armed person okay and such offense is cognizable right any offense done by a uh, what do you say a soldier or an armed person so basically anything that is very serious okay that is a cognizable offense generally okay so at least no two or three cognizable and non cognizable offense for you to understand for which a police officer can conduct an investigation for which he cannot conduct an investigation okay now writing armed with a deadly weapon is cognizable offense right so uh, something uh, you can look at something that is non cognizable occupier of land not giving information of any right is a non cognizable offense are you getting what i'm trying to tell so if you know one or two it becomes easier for you to understand the concept clear okay now the whether the police officer has the right to conduct investigation in case of cognizable offense yes even without the order of magistrate but yes, but when it comes okay. to non cognizable offense he has to uh, without the magistrate's order he doesn't have the power to try such cases yes someone had a doubt i don't know okay i'll continue right next comes section 165 which talks about search by a police officer okay so 165 gives power for uh, the police officer to conduct a search if he has reason to believe that anything necessary for the purpose of investigation may be found so he police officer on his own motion he has the power to search any premises okay and if he finds anything he must record it in writing and he must also record the reason for making such search am i clear yes yeah all right uh, so till now what we studied was the powers of a police officer right now what we would be studying is the power of a magistrate right now the court can take cognizance of an offense only when the condition requisite for initiation of proceedings before it are fulfilled otherwise the court does not obtain jurisdiction to try the offense the first thing is court can take cognizance of an offense that is it can take up the case only when the proceedings the uh, what do you say the procedure has been followed properly okay that it has gone for an inquiry investigation and all of it okay only then the court has jurisdiction to take up such cases okay uh, any magistrate of first class and second class are specially empowered to take cognizance of an of uh, about an offense basically cognizance of an offense is taking up a case okay so magistrate of first class and magistrate of second class can take up a case if they have received complaints of the facts constituting the offense if they have received complaint about some offense which has happened if they have received a police officer about a uh, police report about such facts okay if they have received any information from any other person other than police officer or the offense has come to the knowledge of the magistrate so in such cases the magistrate of the first class and second class can take up any case right so what are the four conditions if they receive a complaint or if they receive a police report or if they receive some information from any other person other than the police report or to their own knowledge they know about the commission of an offense am i clear in these cases the magistrate of first class and second class are empowered to take up a case right now cognizance of an offense by the sessions court court of sessions okay so generally the court of session does not take cognizance of any uh, offense as an original jurisdiction remember in civil procedure court we studied about original jurisdiction and appellate jurisdiction yes, similarly sessions court will take up cases which has been taken up by the magistrate of first class or second class and then has been passed to the sessions court okay like if the offense is 
uh, you know huge where punishment is really high for up to 10 years only then the uh, case will be taken up to the court of sessions but as in original jurisdiction they don't take it up unless it is passed on by the magistrate clear clear or confused why no response only look at all of you clear ma'am clear clear okay. yes um because because this is like too many topics i don't know if you guys are following it or getting confused let me know at any point of time if i have to stop if i have to re explain it please let me know okay uh moving on to complaints to magistrate so till now we understood complaints that are filed with a uh, police which is actually called as an fir complaint is actually made to a magistrate when we started this chapter itself we discussed about it right a magistrate can take cognizance of an offence on a complaint when he examines the complainant and the witness okay upon oath or substance or through an examination which is reduced to writing so magistrate can take up a case if he receives a complaint in writing either from a person who is who is himself a victim or through any of the witness okay magistrate will enquire into the case and may take evidences of witness on oath but where the offence is triable by the court of sessions okay so he can conduct an enquiry he can take witnesses on the oath right he may dismiss the complaint if after considering the oath and the result of investigation and enquiry that there is no sufficient ground for pr uh, pr uh, proceeding with the case so what a magistrate will do he will take a complaint he will call for witness he will take oath and all right he will conduct an investigation or an enquiry now if there are no sufficient grounds for the case to withstand then he may order for dismissal of such complaint okay but if the magistrate feels that there is sufficient ground to take cognizance of offence that is this there is some substance in this case then he will issue summons for the attendance of the accused okay so then he will decide whether you know uh, the what judgment has to be passed he'll uh, call for all witnesses search warrant all those things happen later but at the first stage itself if there is no locus standi that the case will survive okay then the case will get dismissed then and there itself okay now uh, whenever there is a judgment in every trial in a criminal case okay uh, of original jurisdiction that is first where it is taken cognizance okay the uh, judgment is pr uh, pronounced by the presiding officer who will read out the entire part of the judgment or the operative part in open court okay here it is very specific in civil procedure court Uh, we never uh, heard about judgment has to be read out and all of it in criminal procedure court judgment has to be read out in open court just like how you see in movies okay here they have to read out the operative part of the judgment right now generally in criminal procedure court there is no room for an appeal right you a person is either a convict or not a convict where is the question for appeal okay but in very exceptional cases there might be an appeal to the high court okay from the uh, original jurisdiction to the high court am i clear hmm. okay uh, now moving on to the last concept in this chapter okay so for before this i have to give you a little background about this limitation okay so we we also have this chapter and generally in law there is something called as law of limitation okay if you have read in companies act okay if a company has been struck off right you have 20 years to file a revival petition for that company that is the company's name has been struck off maybe they have done some non filing or some offense roc has removed the name but if you want to get that company back on track you have 20 years after the 20 years you can't do anything okay like that we have law of limitation for almost all civil laws right say income tax act you have 8 years to file objection if you cross that 8 years you can't do anything 
right so that is called as law of limitation there's a time period for which you have to take up legal action understood the concept of limitation yes yes this is applicable to almost all civil laws okay but for all practical purpose you guys tell me for criminal law we can we have a limitation period that is from the day of offense right within certain number of months or years only you can file a case is that possible in a criminal case maybe you get to know about that offense only after a month yeah. correct you one person is absconding he has been kidnapped you get to know after probably a month or two right for a criminal procedure there cannot be a limitation set but generally they say the time to file complaint should be at the earliest possible time to avoid this delay which will cause problem in the investigation after say if there is some murder case okay after one month there is a possibility that the traces might not be really seen the fingerprints might be lost correct to avoid such things they say that you have to file a case at the earliest possibility clear okay yes. but otherwise also the court says that there are some exceptional cases where you can have a uh, you know limitation period set in okay now 6 months if the uh, offense is punishable with fine only so if it's an offense which is punishable with fine alone like some uh, robbery of some small amount and all within 6 months you have to file a complaint okay now one year if the offence is punishable with imprisonment for up to one year okay so if there is imprisonment for up to one year then you have one year time to file a complaint for such offences okay within 3 years you have to file a case if the imprisonment for such case is from one year to 3 years clear so this is just the time frame within which you have to file a complaint but how Am will I clear? A, but how will a common person uh, he has to first know what is the time frame and then uh, do this correct now that is where i am coming from the next point is commencement of the period of uh, limitation now if you know the date then the date of offence from that day 6 months or 1 year or 3 years okay if you know the date of offence like say 4 uh, years back someone flicked my mobile while i was walking on the road this is real okay so someone flicked so i know the date of offence now someone robbed my cell phone if i had to file a complaint i had to file it asap okay or maximum time i had was 6 months to file that complaint okay so one is either the date of offence or if the commission of offence was not known to the person aggrieved or to the police officer in such case the first day it comes to the knowledge of the person of any person that is police officer or any person so you get to know about some offense that has happened okay mm -hmm. uh, for example say someone was traveling for 15 days okay and their house was completely robbed now they don't know on which day it was robbed from the day they get to know they have 6 months time okay okay yeah now the next option is where the identity of the offender is not known correct it is possible that obviously in criminal cases you won't know who is the person who has done some offence okay the first day from which such identity of that person comes to the knowledge of any person or the aggrieved person right uh, if you don't know who has done it at some point of time you have a doubt on person or you feel that this person has some clue that he has committed that offence then the time period starts from when you get to know about the identity of the offender clear yes ma'am now you got the concept yes. yeah but ma'am i have seen a uh, few or uh, not two cases where a person goes missing somebody a person goes missing and uh, they just wait because they have some medical issue sometimes they come back and sometimes they don't come back so uh, one thing happened like a person went away and didn't return they waited 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 ultimately after 8 months or 10 months they went to lodge a complaint is that possible 
it is possible that's what see you will have this limitation time okay now if it is see a person missing because of health reason is actually not a criminal offense at all okay okay it is only that you are searching for that person so you you ideally need only a search warrant right you are, you don't want to find him to put him behind bars you don't want to find him to arrest him correct correct right yeah. we are talking ha huh? so that is complaint to find the person a search okay, okay. and that is nothing to do with criminal procedure okay. what we are talking about is when there is a criminal offense someone has murdered someone kidnapped someone robbed Understood. some forgery cases fraud cases in such case by when you should file the complaint okay right the next one is exceptions to this limitation now if there is a prosecution already pending there is some prosecution already pending so that phase when there is another prosecution that is pending is, is uh, you know exempted from this limitation that is today i get to know about some offense i have one year to file case right now suppose there is already some prosecution pending so that phase will be excluded and the period will start after the prosecution has ended okay or suppose there is a stay order right so that time is not considered for limitation okay or there is any previous consent or institution for any prosecution if there is already an existing case okay so or that person is not within india when uh, you know the period of limitation was going on then there can be an extension for time limit or that person was uh, you know absconding or he was concealing himself right so if that person is not there how will i file a complaint against him right so at such times the limitation period can be extended clear you will understand better when we do this chapter on limitation okay now it's it's a very new concept that's why i just gave you a basic but generally for most of the things that happen under law there is a law of limitation there is a time frame within which you can seek court's help okay so in criminal procedure code obviously you cannot identify the exact date of the offense and that's why these you know broad framework for timelines are given clear yes ma'am Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, now the last topic uh, is about summary trails. Okay. If you remember in uh, civil procedure code, we studied something called as summary procedure. Those are small cases which talk only about recovery of debt. Correct. So here also we have a concept called summary trail. Okay. Now summary trails are cases where the cases can be disposed of at. once okay you don't need a lot of people hearing uh, witnesses nothing it might be small small offenses for which are uh, punishable with imprisonment uh, of a term not exceeding 2 years that is up to 2 years whatever uh, you know offenses are there imprisonment up to 2 years come under summary trail okay so any chief judicial magistrate metropolitan magistrate or magistrate of first class who specially uh, you know empowered on behalf of high court may call a case as summary trial if it is any of the following offenses okay these are all chota mota offenses where there is no life imprisonment where there is no death and all uh, imprisonment for up to 2 years will come under summary trial okay now if some property is stolen and the value of property see this is an age old act right criminal procedure code that's why they have given that any stolen goods up to 2000 rupees will come under summary trail in all practical purpose i don't think anyone will file a complaint also for losing 2000 rupees now okay yeah. but yeah but if there is some stolen property and the value of the property is not more than 2000 rupees it comes under uh the summary trail okay or uh, if any if anyone has some uh, retained some stolen property of not exceeding 2000 rupees okay or you are concealing any uh, uh document or data or any property which not, which does not exceed 2000 rupees okay or there is um, uh, you know breach in uh, any of uh, the public peace or anything like that okay so or offenses which so basically it's all small small offenses okay they are called as 
summary trails. Now, this act has not been amended to increase the price limit also. Okay. At least they should make it 50,000 only then people will file complaint. Otherwise, what is the point? Uh, for 2,000 rupees, no one will even go to the court. But these are the limits set for summary trades. Am I clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so with this, we come to an end uh, to the criminal procedure code. Okay, uh, this chapter was on uh, public demand that you all wanted. I hope you guys uh, understood this concept and yes. understood what all we discussed under criminal procedure code. Was this relatively easier than civil procedure code? The easier, the easy to the understand. Okay. Why are so many people leaving the room now? I Did I conclude the class? So many people I'm getting a notification that they are leaving the class. Okay. Now, um, now that we have some time left, what is your appetite to start a new chapter? Or we'll start in the next class itself. Be honest. Be very honest. Because I, like I always tell, I don't want quantitative uh, this one studies if it is qu only qualitative then we will do okay or which we'll just discuss uh, in you want to start man next yeah which chapter uh, sorry which one which one the which chapter man now you want to start uh if we are doing we'll do indian penal code IPC. I'll do one thing. Let me not start the chapter as such. Okay. Let me just give you a brief background about the chapter. Yeah. Okay. And maybe discuss a little. Uh, we usually don't get time to discuss on your exam preparation and all. I want to know uh, how is your exam preparation going on because we are already in October. Right. Um, are you guys uh, confident of all the four subjects that we are writing? Any subject you are not confident? Let me know. I'm not confident about the tax laws. Tax law, okay. Anybody else? Okay. Now, what is it that is difficult for you in the tax law? Is it because the syllabus is huge or you're not understanding concept? Um, frankly speaking, ma'am, the syllabus is also huge and uh, I'm not that very good at calculations, so I'm feeling it a bit difficult to cope up with it because every day I'm not able to, you know, revise the same. Uh, each and every class I'm not able to revise the same day because I work and uh, it's very uh, difficult to manage the time. Okay. See, the easiest way, uh, I'm not telling uh, from your individual perspective, this is for everyone. Okay. Now, all four subjects are important for you. Even if you are very good at one subject, okay, and if you don't write another one properly, you are possibly losing out on your aggregate, right? Now, the subject which you feel is most difficult, practice more of that, okay? Because you have to, by hook or crook, get 200, right? So, which means you have to get minimum 50 in every paper, right? So, plan your study strategically. Keep two subjects which you are very good at, okay? As a subject where you are scoring at least 60 or 60 plus. This has to be a, a your strategy, okay? Subjects where you feel you are relatively weak. For some people, it might be jurisprudence. For some people, it might be tax. For some people, it might be SBEC or company law. Whichever subject is difficult for you, focus more on that, okay? No paper is actually difficult uh, in comparison, okay? If it, it is only difficult from your understanding perspective, but not difficult as such, okay? But if any paper you feel you are not confident about, then take it from me that in spite of writing that paper and not passing it, it's better you put all your all in you because there's no way of avoiding any paper. You can't leave any paper and you can't just pass in any paper also because getting that aggregate is very important. I have had people in my batch who would get uh, 198, 197 some people 199 but not pass any of the four papers if you don't get 60 plus you don't get that exemption also right so plan your studies in such a way that you have at least two subject where you can pucker score 60 plus okay then the subject where you, which is difficult for you even if you get 40 45 you can clear the module right so please plan your studies that way uh, again uh, i i would tell you by 
you know 30th of november finish off all your studies whether it has been done by the faculty not done by the faculty don't break your head for it if you want to understand any concept you read it you will be able to understand and if even if you, your faculty has not finished the syllabus by 30th of november you finish your studies by 30th of november okay and in december please do only revision and that time if the faculty is teaching you any subject it will become like a revision for you okay don't keep last minute burden at all you cannot study two days before the exam and pass okay the syllabus is huge it will demotivate you all also make on timetable it's not too late to do it now also every day study at least two subjects okay one one hour at least but study in a qualitative manner that it will stay in your head forever okay try to remembering remember it as many times as possible that is whenever you find time while you are working also just try to remember what all you had studied what all points you you read about okay the more you remember it gives you confidence to write the exam clear uh, solve as many papers as possible none of the questions will get repeated but your confidence level will get boosted okay so do that exam is not just about reading and writing it exam is about keeping that mental balance also till your exams are over okay so first of all don't take these exams lightly second thing no matter what don't give up okay be confident and stay positive so to do that december pura you have to only revise revise and revise so that will gain that will boost your confidence okay so please make one good timetable spend some half an hour in making it colorful whatever it is and start following it i used to do this to uh, i used to tell this to every other batch okay but people would tell ma'am i can make timetable but to follow it it is very difficult first day i will follow then i will not follow then i would tell them that you make a timetable and send it to me and every day report it to me that would make them you know accountable they are like i have to tell to ma'am that i i did what i was supposed to do so that will help you in gaining confidence right so do all that it takes to pass the exam we are there to help you out you want to bug us it's okay right so ensure that you are accountable to someone or someone in your family you tell them that you set a target today i'll finish two chapters you have to finish two chapters don't compromise on such things okay make short notes for every subject so that in december you only go through short notes and you revise once you go through short notes you should be able to relate to everything you studied now here if we are talking today's uh, topic about powers of magistrate okay make short short notes up to 5 years up to 10 years up to 7 years so if you only know these points you can write the entire answer that should be your exam preparation okay don't just keep on ratta maru fine be make your studies smart studies am i clear anything else like this you want to know let me know today we have some time usually we don't have that time also and from now on every these were the bigger chapters okay indian penal code is one more big chapter after we are done with that every class will be one one chapter okay whenever i take class one whole chapter will get over okay they are all small small chapters like how we did rti how we did uh, income uh, information technology okay so i don't think that time i might have enough time to tell you all about exam preparation if there's anything let me know otherwise uh, we'll wind up today we'll start uh, next class i also wanted to know uh, your company law is coming to an end your company law class is almost done no no it's still it's there ma'am the part b over ma'am you got spc sbc also is still going on spc is also staying only in income tax uh tax tax part mm -hmm. is finished start started with gst gst okay no because i am only thinking from taking some extra classes let me see for me the problem is sundays look a little difficult uh, but let me see however possible uh, whenever you guys are okay you let me know we'll try to take one hour class or so just to finish off all the small small chapters soon okay those are all simple chapters so it shouldn't take a lot of time Okay. Right, we'll plan that out, and we'll finish syllabus from our end ASAP. Okay. Anything else that you guys want to know, ma'am? Regarding yeah. the criminal procedure code, ma'am, can we cancel no. the warrant, ma'am? Can we cancel the warrant? It has to be passed by the magistrate. 
வாரண்ட் <laughs> right so usually it is not cancelled what will happen is after a warrant is uh, you know issued and it is proven that there is no locus standi it will be dismissed it will not cancel is not the right word there might be dismissal of the uh, uh, warrant clear okay okay anything else fine uh, we are winding up like what uh, 14 minutes before time okay take that extra 14 minutes to read and revise something okay we'll catch up in the next class we'll start with indian penal code so if you want to like have a brief out outlook of about the chapter you can do that okay right thank you so much guys yes, take thank care you. okay yeah the sidarth you wanted to talk to me after the class yeah uh, i think most of the questions ma'am has told mm. uh, so i was telling i think uh, one more right? uh, okay. yes she is there ma'am is there yes. no no bani bani i was asking to bani i think she is there no what i was telling is uh, basically couple of uh, classes that i am uploading into the youtube channel okay the same class what we have the same uh-huh. thing i am uploading uh, so i wanted to tell because in the group i cannot post because that comes okay. to the institute level and they now will be able to sure that because uh, what i spend is like in the orientation day i mean in the introduction class they told no and then uh, you know when it was uh, when the first class was there i asked everybody individually but not everybody responded but for a fact like when uh, in the last 10 12 minutes what are the questions came if okay. if we go back if you go back and ask on the first class of company law and tax law what we discussed nobody will be able to <laughs> catch it up you know so yeah. i said why not i was doing that but then it individually sharing to everybody will become a difficult yes because as of now the complete compilation is about 150 gb yes so that's not a easy thing to transfer over the internet because not everybody will be able to get it. Okay. so what i wanted to check with uh, you and vani uh, because with others also have checked is basically that If I put all these recordings to the YouTube channel, will it be okay for you guys? Because those will be yes, like okay. private, because it is not visible to public. Basically, like I think you must have seen that. So I'll put up the one, and then I will share each video and mm. uh, link a particular link. So that will yes. be like a notepad file. But otherwise, if you go back, because if all of you have got the channel, if you go to the playlist, each playlist you will get. Basically, for company law, you will get a company law. For tax, it will be tax. For mm. NBC, for other subjects, so all four papers. Okay. So what I am trying to do from module two onwards is soon after we finish the module one exam, mm. which is like where we are focusing. I am trying to start module two classes. Okay, so sure. In interactive sessions, like creating that in a crux, not you know stretching too much, like going in crisp in about an hour, and then probably we can have more of discussion because what happened. i was finding out the videos if you go and see the e learning videos in the e learning mm. portal the videos okay. are very similar because see, it has broken down into clips but there are two ways to it nagendra if i record those videos say for 20 yes, minutes and i upload if you mm. have any questions or anything then your it has to go through the comment section and then i will have to filter it and you know kind of post it up yeah so yeah i'm thinking yeah. we can decide on the plan like whether it if There are five topics which takes about forty minutes. We'll have forty minutes, and then probably yes. we can have some quick questions, and we can wind it up. So what happens after the class gets over? The recordings will be there. 
because no. see for the second module also the same thing will happen icc will look how many students are going to opt and uh, how it will be because again they will try because they want more student to come to the chapter rather than attending online because you know the numbers keep fluctuating and also mm. that's the idea so i was thinking on why not uh, we do that but soon after the exam we might sit back and can discuss on the plan of action because see what once the class gets over or once the one hour session gets over the recording might be like available in 2 3 hours and what happens is because Every day between 4:30 to 6:30 becomes an integral time. Because this time, you know, not everybody will be available. So we yeah. can have that in the probably in the weekend by collecting, you know, setting up the agenda for the topics of each subject, and probably we can set up like one timing which can be favorable to all. Because yeah. all of us are working. Like class is going, I'm still working. You can see. So yeah. it keeps juggling up. So I was thinking okay. like. Plan out something. Even if the institute does also, the same thing will happen because they will not provide us the recording. Again, mm. it goes the same thing. So <laughs> for that reason, I want I asked you to stay back to discuss. Okay. So, Means you can uh, post the videos in the in where uh, in in the the YouTube channel, sir. Yeah, you can. I'll, I'll I'll put that because that takes little time. So I'll upload because you know there are some portions where there are too many gaps. You know, yeah. take the breaks and the mute. You know, there is no mm. response. So those no, means, parts I'm trying. In company to... law, we ended the company's board and directors and the remuneration and the meetings and the general meetings and the.